When was the last time, other than in the last minute, that you considered how music makes you feel? When was the last time that you considered that your interactions with music, or lack of, could be affecting your mental health? Music has been my life, my constant, my passion for more than 40 years. And for the last 30 years or more, that's involved an awful lot of heavy metal music. It's the phase my f parents are still hoping might end one day. <laughs> what do you think is the formula for good mental health? We talk about diet, we talk about exercise, we talk about nutrition. Shouldn't we be talking about music as part of that conversation? Shouldn't we be making sure that every kid has access to all kinds of music, not just the ones that you don't think are just noise? Shouldn't we be teaching music in the context of mental health? Just to be clear, I don't come at today's topic from any scientific background. I do have a PhD. It's in heavy metal. <laughs> yes, the music. Yes, really. Is it not common sense that music affects mood? It's often forgotten, though, that our reaction to music is individual. You might have been really chilled out by me playing the piano. I really love heavy metal. That, to me, is uplifting, empowering. I go to sleep to that stuff. Ask my wife. She's here. <laughs> metal has this stereotypical image of being sad and angry and aggressive. But for some, that's cathartic. Your reaction to music is not a factual reaction for everyone. Even a cursory Google search will show there's extensive research out there now which shows that an active engagement with music can improve mental health. I might not come at this from a scientific background, but there is plenty of science out there. I just think maybe we need some more. Whether it's listening to music, or singing, or playing music, or drumming, they've all been seen to improve mental health outcomes, lowering levels of both anxiety and depression. As an online piano coach, I hear this kind of stuff all the time. Playing the piano helps me to relax after a long day at work. It's my way of taking the stress out of the day. I'm convinced I sleep better in the evening. How amazing is that? So not only a relaxing way to spend a bit of time doing something for you, but you get to sleep better as a byproduct. Well, what happens if you sleep better for life, for business, for family, for mental health? Here's another story I heard. I started taking piano lessons during one of the most stressful times of my life. The joy of playing sustained me. In a way, I say to my husband, it saved my life. Now, is that because of a distraction? Is that because of the act of habit? Maybe. I have one client who considers her eating disorder in recovery since she started to play piano. She replaced a negative habit she didn't want with a positive habit that she did and changed her habits and coping mechanisms appropriately. Now, during the pandemic, many of us were exposed to extremely high, unfamiliar levels of stress. So what does research tell us happened to musical engagement during that time? The UK Music Survey for 2021. One million people in the UK took up an instrument during lockdown. But there was also a similar impact on listening to music, all contributing towards the suggestion that people were turning to music for a positive impact on mental health during a stressful time. 74% of people said that the quality of their life had been improved by music. 39% said that the importance had increased during the previous year. 57% of adults said they felt that music had helped them cope with lockdown. And look how few people disagreed. In the same year, the Max Planck for the Institute of Empirical Aesthetics, I've practiced that one, in 2021, they spoke to more than 5,000 participants, more than half reported using music to cope with emotional and social stresses. But there was a distinction between music listening and music making in terms of providing different ways to cope. This was an online choir rehearsal that I took during the pandemic. People in the Max Planck report were talking about how people who participated in music were using music during the pandemic as a way to replace a sense of belonging and a sense of community. If you'd asked me before the pandemic 
whether taking a choir rehearsal online would have any point when more than 100 people on screen couldn't hear anyone sing other than themselves, I would have said you were completely bonkers. So why were so many of them crying? Perhaps it's because whilst we know the communal experience is huge in a group like this, perhaps we were being shown that it's even more important than the music. One of the most powerful elements of music is how it gets attached to memories. You all have happy, sad, personal memories where a song is part of the story, right? So we're going to have an experiment. I'm going to play some tunes. You see how fast you remember a memory, uh, and then we're all friends together. These songs were all played by me at someone's wedding. You might even be here. First one. Thousand Years by Christina Perry. Uh, what about this one? Adele's Feel My Love. Maybe some of you had this one. Did you have this one? That's Highway to Hell by ACDC, <laughs> which I promise I played at a wedding. Now, probably these were quick memories for some of you, hopefully happy. But it's not just weddings where this happens, right? The song you had at a loved one's funeral, the song that one of you and your family sang at karaoke, perhaps you sang a song on holiday in the car. These have memories attached to them. Have you ever considered that a possible positive boost for your mental health might just be listen to a song that has a happy memory attached to it? I'm going to share a personal story about how powerful this idea can be. Starships, nothing's going to stop us now. What a banger. That was my first dance at my wedding with my wife, Angela. But then four years later, we were at a 20-week scan when Angela was pregnant with our first child. We got the news that every new parent dreads. Our child, who we now discovered was our daughter, was suffering from two terminal conditions, one of which was dangerous to my wife and it was recommended that we have what is known in the trade as a termination for medical reasons, a TFMR. What song do you think was playing in the reception, floating into our consultant's room as we got that news? Starships, nothing's going to stop us now. We looked at each other with tears in our eyes and realized that the song associated with the happiest moment in our lives was now forever intrinsically linked with the worst moment of our lives. For months, it was too difficult and painful to listen to the song. We had to almost fight to reclaim it. It went from being a love song to a love song in the face of defiance. Nothing's going to stop us now, right? Now, I don't mind saying, before then, I'd experienced periods of depression before, but since then, the periods have got longer and harder. TFMR becomes with a very specific form of guilt. It is recommended to you that you end the pregnancy, but you don't want to. And legally, it's your choice. At the time, I was writing an album full of music for my Arth project. Arth is an old Northumbrian word. It means my native land. I'm really passionate about how bands represent where they're from in their music. That's what my PhD in heavy metal was about, national and regional identity in heavy metal music. For some bands, that's using old poetry in their lyrics. For some bands, it's using old landscapes as paintings on the cover. For some bands, that's using old folk songs as the beginning of tunes. But I was increasingly aware that I was suffering but not using my own musical medicine. I was writing an album called Take Up My Bones, which is the story of the 7th century Northumbrian saint, Cuthbert, and the journey of his relics from Holy Island to what we now know as Durham Cathedral. But I was struggling. Obviously, I couldn't shoehorn a song about losing a child into an album about a Northumbrian saint, and nor did I want to. But I needed to find a way to memorialize Laurie somehow, as we now called her, Laurie Deeks. I needed to make sense of her existence. I needed to make a musical nod. It had to be, make it real somehow, and it had to be part of, music had to be part of that. My brother-in-law and sister-in-law arranged for a star to be named after Laurie, and we didn't know anything about this until the star chart arrived in the post, showing us where the Laurie Deke star is in the Andromeda system. The coordinates of that star are the numbers on my tattoo. 
that's here, so I can, she's always with me. I call it my heart on my sleeve. I can see it when I play piano and when I play guitar. The music theory geeks in the room will possibly take exception to this story. So I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning with a sudden idea. What if those numbers weren't star coordinates? What if they were the numbers of a musical scale? What does that sound like as a tune? I know there are no zeros in a musical scale. I had to take creative license and make them a one. <laughs> but recording that melody on guitar in the studio was almost suffocating. Performing it live with the band, as I did this time last week in Germany in the metal festival, is super emotional. But it means the world to me that that tape, that theme, had been committed to tape. Now, if you don't know it's there, you don't know it's there. But when I hear that melody, it means the world. Because that's Laurie's theme. Here was I using heavy metal music to improve my mental health. I'm happy to report we now have a happy, healthy daughter with us. She's called Nola. She'll be two on Christmas Eve. Um, we tell her uh, about her sister in the stars. Uh, music is a huge part of her life. She thinks that every T-shirt I put on is an Iron Maiden T-shirt. <laughs> She's often right. <laughs> Maiden! I just want to encourage you to start thinking about music and how you use it today. Don't put it on in the background and then forget about it and do 10 other things. Listen to it. Use it to stir important, uplifting memories. I mightn't have convinced you that heavy metal needs to be the music for you, although it is for me. But that is how heavy metal has helped me. Before I finish, I want to let you hear a little bit about what that sounds like as a melody. This is what it ended up being on guitar on the Arth album in a song, Only Three Shall Know. And so I want to finish today by letting you hear it in its original form, as it was originally written, and finish today's talk as I started, on the piano. So whilst to the rest of the world that melody is known as Only Three Shall Know, in my house at least, this is known as Laurie's theme. Thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. Peace.